And there's at times this desire to look ahead, to, to claim all the things that he's promised, right? The things that I know to be true in my heart, the dreams that are within my heart, the, the things that I know that he's put there, the prophetic words, the things spoken over me. And, and I see that, right? Um, but it might not be here yet. It might not be all manifesting yet. And so it's this balance of, okay, Lord, I, I want it now, but I understand that sometimes it's a process and sometimes it's a journey. And so uh, it's kind of like the Israelites, you know? It, it's natural for them to look ahead to the promised land while they're in the wilderness, right? Uh, they're supposed to do that. We're, we're supposed to look ahead to the promises of God and, and the things, the plans that He has for us. Uh, that, that is natural and that is good. Amen. Um, but there's also a message in the wilderness that he's trying to speak to us about. Right? He's trying to accomplish in the meantime while, while we're waiting in, in, in transition. And so uh, that's what I'd like to talk about today. Um, see, God took the Israelites through the wilderness where possessions were meaningless uh, so that he could trust them in a land where they were abundant, right? Uh, and so it's this idea that God wants to increase us but it's for our good, not for our destruction. Right? He, he wants to bless us. He wants to really pour out his blessings on our lives. But we have to learn that it isn't about those things. It's only about him. And, and, and so um, I'm not going to give my kids something they're not ready for, right? But the more time that they spend with me, the faster they'll get ready. <laughs> Now, Jeremiah 29, 11, we all know that, right? But I know the plans that I have for you, the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. But, but you know the verses right after that. Verse 13. Because those two verses say, If you will seek me with all your heart, then you will find me. Amen? So he's got the plan. He's got the purpose. He's got the thing that he's established for you. But he's just going to give it to you, right? He's wanting you to seek him, right? It is the glory of God to conceal a matter as the glory of kings to search it out, amen? He's wanting us to seek him with all of our heart. And then when we find him, we're going to find the plan, amen? But when we find him, we're going to find what it is that he has for us. One step at a time. That's good. And so... This, this idea that Jesus to his disciples is follow me. And, and then, you know, a little afterwards, in, in, after a little while, following, he says, now go. Go and make disciples, right? And, and, and then, you know, he uh, says in uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, now, now wait, right? Now wait. And, and, and uh, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. And then I want you to go, right? Uh, and so this is this idea of going back and forth, back and forth, and uh, is God got more, more than one personality? You know, is it, is it not, no, you know, it, it's not one or the other. It's not either or it's both. Right? It's this idea of sit and listen and then go and do. Sit and listen, 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 go and do. It's this idea that God wants us to sit and listen and hear the words that he has to share in our hearts and then go and do. There, there has to be obedience, right? Faith, faith isn't real faith unless it's acted on. Amen? But then we have to step out when he's speaking to us. But we got to listen for him to speak to us. Yeah. See, I want to share something with you. Um, I, I remember being at a, a church, and uh, they, they asked everyone to um, stand up. And so I was standing, and... Uh, they began to share this verse, and it was a verse that I knew well. It was a verse that I had stood upon for many years, and it was a verse in which, by which I, I've seen many miracles uh, take place. And that verse was uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 24. It says, What things, so ever you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received, and you shall have. Right? So I remember uh, one day waking up, and I had, um, you know, it was over many days that I was waking up and seeing these warts on the bottom of my right foot. 
and I was one that wasn't wanting to go to the doctor, wasn't wanting to deal with it, and so it, it's just, this thing progressed. I mean, it just got worse and worse. And so finally I went to the doctor, and uh, on the bottom of my foot I had what was called planter warts. And planter warts, just like a plant, it's got some roots, right? It goes deep into your foot. And so I went to the doctor, the doctor said, John, I've never seen anything like this. He said, if I were to even try to help you, I would have to operate on you. I would have to you know, cut into your foot, and you'd be on crutches for about six months. Um, and I was like, I don't want that, right? You know, I was just a young guy, you know? So I'm like, I'm, I ain't, I'm, not, I'm not receiving that. I'm not listening to that. So I went home, and I said, God, I thank you because your word says, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you have received, and you shall have. And so I just started waking up every morning, and I would start looking at the bottom of my foot and said, God, I thank you for making the bottom of my right foot look just like the bottom of my left foot, right? Because on the bottom of my left foot, I didn't have any work. So I just started as if I was believing it, it was as if it was already there, right? And so I just started thinking. Now sometimes I would feel some pain while I was walking, shoot up my leg, and I would just, every time I felt that, I said, God, thank you. You know, okay. just, just continue to thank him every time I felt anything. And then at night, you know, when I'm going to bed, I look at the bottom of my foot and say, God, I thank you. Yeah. And the bottom of my right foot looked like the bottom of my left foot. Yeah. Two, two weeks passed, and it got worse. I mean, it was ugly. There was some coloration started to happen, right? Um, and so I just kept on, I just kept that. God, I thank you. That whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received and you shall have. And so I was believing and I just continued to thank him and praise him. Well, one week after that, so a total of three weeks after the doctor, I woke up and there was not one more on the bottom. Amen. Hallelujah. Right? That, 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 that can't be funny Jesus, right? That's not my no matter. That's not, that, that's Jesus, right? And, and so that was a verse that I was well associated with, yeah. right? And I, and I can share many stories in, in correlation to my faith in that verse and believing God for certain things in my life. And so here we're in this church and he asks us to stand up and to think on this verse and what things are we desire and what we believe that you have received and shall have. So he said, I want you to think about the desires of your heart right now. Those things that you really want to believe God for, right? Those things that maybe you've been believing God for a while. And I want you to just now think as if you've already gotten it. And, and what kind of feeling do you feel right now? Right? And so, some of you guys might be doing this right now, right? Some of us, Lord, I thank you. You know, I'm, I'm just thinking some of the things that I'm desiring. Some of the, and think about those feelings because a feeling... You get that feeling. That, that's a, you know, it's this idea that we walk by faith, you know, and, and that, that, that stirs in our hearts to help us get a hold of that. And so I, I was, amen, I was in, right? And so I had this, uh, this, this thing that I'm believing God for, and it's just, it's just really a lot of the prophetic words that have been on my life, and, and just the fullness of that ministry coming to pass, right? Healings happening, you know, all over. Uh, opportunities, traveling the nations, you know, really speaking. Uh, the things that he's put on my heart. And so I, I picture myself there and as if it's already all happened. And, uh, you know, I, man, I, at first I'm feeling some joy. At first I'm feeling some, you know, peace. And, and then for a moment I felt empty. And I was like, that's different. Why am I feeling empty? And so then I was like, okay, and I opened my eyes, and you know, everyone's rejoicing, everyone's you know celebrating, everyone's, and I'm feeling empty. I said, okay, Lord, let's do this again. So I close, <laughs> I, I close my eyes, and uh, I just think about at this point, all of that was removed, and now it was just me and him. And I saw me and him just walking together, me and Jesus just walking together out in this field. And man, I can tell you, I can't tell the, the, the joy, right? The, the, the joy that I got in that moment. I said, amen, that's it. That's it. And what, what began to transpire over the next few months in my life was I started seeing these things. I started he seeing healing set place, you know, all, all around me. And all these different promises that were being fulfilled. And then at the same time, I remember feeling empty. So what I had believed for in the beginning of the year, January, now it's the springtime, it's the summertime, and I'm experiencing some of these things, more of these things that God spoke to my heart and promised, and there's an emptiness. And I said, Lord, that's it, I'm going on fast. And so it was just the idea that I'm going to push some things back, I'm going to remove some things so I can draw you to Him, and I can spend. And so now I'm still seeing some of those things, but now I'm not empty anymore, right? Because I'm close to the fire, and I'm walking with Him. I'm not talking to anybody today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's this idea that God has a purpose and a plan for our life. And, and there is promise, right? There is breakthrough. There is, but apart from Him, it's meaningless. Apart from Him, it's nothing. Am I talking to anybody today? We, we've got to stay close to the Father because everything that He gives, everything that He blesses, the purpose being fulfilled is nothing apart from Him. It's nothing apart from Him. I don't tell you, those things, those dreams realized, apart from Him, will still be empty. You will still be empty. You will still be left wanting. What did, what did King David say? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Right? As long as He's leading me, as long as I sense His nearness, as long as I know that He is with me, I shall not want. Right? It's the idea that we are staying close together regardless of whatever it is that we're going through. Amen. Behold, Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spread forth. Shall you not know it? That I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen. So I, I came to a heritage where I've been now for almost a year and a half, two years. And I uh, came to visit before I you know, accepted the position. And when I got there, uh, the Lord said, there is so much potential here. And he said, uh, that you're going to bring a river in the middle of the desert. Right? And I said, I said, Amen. Not, not to say that there was a desert there, but it was this idea that God was wanting to bring life through what it is that I was going to do just as partnering close to Him. But this idea of the river is, you know, we're not the river, right? He is. But, but we are in Him, right? And, and He is in us. And so we, we are the river when we're yielding and we're staying close to Him. Now that river is flowing through us. Amen. Amen. All right, I need to read some scripture here and uh, keep going. I'm fast forward. All right, so Isaiah chapter 42, verses 6 through 9. I want to read this. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and I will make you to be a covenant for the people, a light for the Gentiles, to open the eyes that are blind, to free the captives from prison, to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place and, I, and new things I declare. Before they spring up, I will announce them to you. Right? So he's talking about the blessing. He's talking about not just the blessing for us, but the blessing for many, that we're going to be a conduit, right? That we are going to be a vessel of blessing for all those around us, right? Talking about blind eyes open, right? Talking about the captives being set free. Talking about the release of those who are sitting in darkness. I'm not talking to anybody today. Do you have people in your circle who are still in darkness? Are you contending for them in the faith? And the Father says, I will walk with you. You will walk with me. I'm going to do a new thing. And here, before it happens, I'm going to announce it to you. I'm going to announce it to you. So he's speaking it to us. But in order for us to get it, we got to be listening, right? Right? And, and so, you know, those disciples would have ended up with, with nothing. No, no catch that day, have they not? Listen. Hey, cast that net on the other side, right? And, and so they listened. And all of a sudden, they had more than they could contain. So, so they looked at him, they listened, they obeyed, and they celebrated with him, right? So it's this idea that our eyes are always on him. Amen? In, in, in John chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, I never saw this until just recently. And it says this. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Right? So this is after he'd already raised him from the dead. Uh -huh. Verse 2. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Mm -hmm. Did you catch that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so <laughs> That's good. Um, and so, here Lazarus, right? The, what was the point of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead? You know, he waited four days, so there's a, there's a powerful testimony in that, because the Spirit was believed to leave after three, right? And there were some things that Jesus was doing that declared the impossible possible. Amen. But, but what happened after he was raised from the dead? I, I see him sitting with Jesus, right? Sitting at the table with Jesus, right? So even after what it is, what it is that God told us to, whatever he's done for us, is his idea that he's calling us to him, to fellowship with him, Amen. So we, we all have a calling for God in our lives. But but what supersedes that calling for us to do things is that calling to Him. We have a calling to 
him that supersedes our calling to do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. First. Amen. And so, but before you're called, you're called to him. Yeah. And in the midst of your call, you're called to him. Yeah. After you're called, you're called to him. Right? Did you get it? You're called to him. Regardless of the time, regardless of the place, regardless of what's going on in your life, you are called to him. Yeah. He is the one who's going to break open, right? Yeah. He is the one who's going to do things on our behalf. And it's us who are called to him. Draw near to him to stay close to him. When you walk close to him, everything changes, right? I, I read my Bible, and the Bible says in the book of Acts that they, they knew that these people had spent some time with Jesus, right? Right? It, it was on the countenance. It, it, it was a spirit about them that they had been with Jesus. Uneducated, right? Who, who were these guys? Other than, I know that they've been with Jesus. Come on. This word isn't just for somebody. This word is for everybody, right? It's just idea that we're all called to Him. Period. Regardless of our call, our call is to Him. Amen. And so, He's the shepherd. Yes. Amen. Jesus said to Peter, Who do you say that I am? Right? And he said, well, some say, you know, or John the Baptist, or Elijah, or one of the prophets, you know. And, and Jesus wasn't happy with that. Answer. He wasn't set on that. He said, no, I don't want to hear what they say, right? I said, who do you, who say that I am? You hear me? Who, who do you say that I am? Come on. See, I don't want to settle with hearing about my mom's faith, about okay. my dad's faith, about my, my pastor's faith. No, I don't want to have a faith of my own, man. I don't want to have a history with God. I don't want my roots to go down deep in my relationship with Him. I want to know Him in ways that others don't. I'm not talking in with I want to know if Daniel had a history with God. David had a history with God. Are you going to have a history with God? Right? And having the Spirit speaking to me say, Jesus, I know, right? Pastor James, I know, right? But who are you? And then have some Spirit give me a being. I ain't signed up for that, right? Who do you say that I am? Now listen to me for me. How about me? Imagine. You see a, a trailer to a movie, right? You see a little uh, preview, and you say, man, that looks really good, right? I, I want to see that. And it comes out, and instead of going to see that, you say, hey, Pastor Jane, why don't you go see that movie, okay? And Pastor Jane, why don't you come tell me about it, right? <laughs> and I, I don't know about you, but, you know, when, when a movie comes out, and I haven't got to see it and really want to see it, somebody starts talking about it. I said, no, uh, no, don't say nothing around me. I don't want to hear it, right? Okay. So, so imagine going to dinner, and uh, man, think about your favorite meal for a minute. I mean, I'm thinking about a ribeye, char grill, medium rare, you know, seasoning, maybe some mashed potatoes, and some grapes, maybe some green beans. Maybe, I mean, whatever that meal might be to you, think about your favorite meal. Now think about that meal right in front of you. And, and you're you know, having, having lunch or dinner with some loved ones, and, and Instead of eating that favorite meal, you just go ahead and watch everybody else eat it. And, and, and you say, take, take a bite, take a bite. You know, you tell them your friend, take a bite. What does that taste like? Is that good? Oh, tell me about it. Tell me about it, right? Okay. Tell me about it. That, oh, man. We ain't going to do that, right? And let, me, let me take it one step further. Say you meet somebody. And man, you, this is it. This, this is the one, right? This is the one you want to marry. And so, you know, you yeah. ask to marry you, and time passes, and here, here's the wedding day, and, you know, you get married, and then, you know, right after you get married, right at the ceremony, you come up to your best friend and say, best friend, I, I, I want you to take my wife um, on this honeymoon, right? I, I, I want my wife to go on this honeymoon with you. And I say that, and after, after a week or so, I want you to come back, and I want you to take me back. Right? 
kind of arena. Why is it that we settle and go to church week after week? Hearing stories from our pastor. We hear the relationship that they have. The word that he's speaking to our pastor. And, and us never settling. Just settling with that never getting our own prayer time.
Hebrews 11, 6, and that says that uh, it's impossible to please God without faith. But he who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Do you believe? Do you believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him? Not just that church. Do you believe it? Around the clock, different seasons of your life, do you believe it? That he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. See, we're going to go through struggle, right? Trouble is going to come knocking at the door, right? We're going to experience those kind of things. But, but when we're in that wilderness season, right? The, the worst thing that could ever happen would be we get a wilderness mentality. And, and in order to avoid that wilderness mentality, that why me, God? Why am I having to go through this, right? And we've all been there. We've all been there. But in order to avoid that, it's going to cause for you to be tapping into that river. Right? Tapping into that river, even in the middle of the desert, so that you can have a different spirit. Amen? Come on. So, we, we know that he's faithful to his word, right? Amen. We, we know that he's faithful to those who honor him. Yeah. And we know that he rewards openly what's done in secret. Yeah. Amen. And in Psalm chapter 8, verse 5, that book ends with this. And it says, Who is that coming up from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? Mm -hmm. That's the picture. That's the purpose of the wilderness. So that we might lean on our beloved. The purpose of suffering so that we might lean on our beloved. Right? The purpose of going through what we don't understand why we're going through, when we're going through, what we're going through. Why? So that we can lean on our beloved. And when we lean, man, now we find strength. And now we're set up, right? But we're set up by God to, to walk in all that He's already prepared for us. Thank you, Lord. So I got, I got, I think I'm on time. I, I, I got peace of the year. I, I, I got to pray. I just want to pray, all right? Um, so we, will you pray with me? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God, we are just grateful. Just grateful, Lord. Humble. Humble and blessed. God, we thank you that regardless of how hopeless our situation might seem, that's no big deal. But God, if we have hopelessness about it, that is a big deal. So God, I pray that, Father, you would give us a different spirit. God, that you would fill us with faith, God. God, we know that you're the one who goes before, Lord. You are the one, the breaker anointing. You are the one who's going to do things on our behalf that we cannot do ourselves. Yeah. God, let us always remember to lead on our beloved, to look to you, Holy Spirit. Yes. Brother, right now, all of us remind us to pour out your spirit Lord, in great measures. Lord. Touch us Lord, in the ways that we need to be touched. Lord. And Father, give us that grace, Lord, to continue to commit, to renew our minds, to, to faithfully, diligently seek you, God. Knowing, God, that you are our rewarder of those who give us. God, we bless you, Father. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Hallelujah.